Welcome to Sacred Space. I'm Jane Sislusis. Sacred Space is an offering from the Diocese of Northern Michigan, and you are very welcome. We hope that wherever you are, you, you are in your own sacred space. If you found us from far away, we hope you'll come visit us one day in our fair diocese. Just so you know, you're always welcome. You are always invited. Whoever you are, um, you are a beloved sibling to us, so we're glad that you're here. Today's reflection will be uh, offered by Lanny Lanto, who is the missioner of UP Wild Church. Be sure to check out the end of Sacred Space, the credits, where there are lots of ways you can get in touch with us, including ways to meet, uh, meet up with UP Wild. And uh, so stay tuned for that. Uh, again, as always, and so much we thank Charles Murphy for his wonderful music. So let's start with today's collect uh, from Prayers for an Inclusive Church by Stephen Shakespeare. Lord of the misfit, whose prophets came like weeds to an ordered garden, shaking all that deadens your love. Give us faith in your kingdom's growth, unruly and exuberant, and let it be a shelter wide enough for all. Through Jesus Christ, our teacher. Amen. Swelling 
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Jesus said, The kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground, and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces of itself, first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with his sickle, because the harvest has come. He also said, With what can we compare the kingdom of God? Or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which, when grown upon the ground, is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs, and puts forth large branches, so the birds of the air can make their nests in its shade. With many such parables he spoke the word to them. As they were able to hear it, he did not speak to them except in parables. But he explained everything in private to his disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Hi, and thank you for letting me share with you today a little bit from the Gospel and from a field guide to medicinal plants and herbs. And in traditional UP wild church fashion, um, we're going to take a walk through the forest as I share a reflection with you. So let's begin. We hear a lot about plants in the Gospels. And we know that Jesus spoke in parables, like the parable of the mustard seed. And we've all heard the meaning behind it. But what if in our age, we've forgotten what a seed is? In Jesus' time, people lived much closer with the land, knowing the natural cycles, how to sow seeds and when to plant them, or just watch them grow from the ground without any help. Much like the native indigenous in our area, they depended on the seeds for life. Many of us hear in Genesis and in these parables about the miraculousness of seeds, but how many of us can right now go into the forest or in our lawn and eat a plant? <laughs> in Ezekiel, God picks a sprig from the top of a cedar so that when it grows again, it will shelter the birds in the forest. Again, another parable, but how many of us can actually identify a cedar tree? At UP Wild Church this summer, we have many outdoor adventures focused on our relationship or lack thereof with seeds, how to save seeds, how to show our kids how to forage for common edible plants. We see this as necessary Christian knowledge that has been lost or forgotten. We feel that the mystery of the seed is, is worthy and it is worth not overlooking, especially within a culture that has separated us from it. We have every convenience at our fingertips. We have commodified and contaminated and self-created modern day food in the grocery aisle. So much so that most of the food that we consume is devoid of nutrients and has been so highly processed that one would wonder if it's the food God created at all. In the Gospel of Mark, there is a seed that the earth produces of itself, first the stalk, then the head, and then the full grain in the head, the mustard seed. We think of it in terms of size and our faith. But the black mustard seed has many medicinal uses. It can be applied for arthritis, 
It can be used to make the hands aseptic, meaning free from contamination caused by harmful bacteria, viruses, or other microorganisms. Mustard poultices are used for congestion in the chest, and its leaves are rich in vitamin A and C, containing compounds shown to have strong anti-cancer activity and may prevent breast and colon cancer. It works in part by encouraging the self-destruction of cancer-damaged cells. This is God's work, abundant and in our midst. We have been given such an array and multitude of plant species. I often hear people comment about the miracle of the seed. They say, it just keeps coming up year after year. I don't even understand where it comes from, how it got there, but here it is again. <laughs> and if we are to have faith of a mustard seed, we are also reminded to trust in God for all of our needs. I wonder how we have removed ourselves so fully from trusting in the nourishment of the plants and the medicinal remedies of the herbs freely given. Yet, we put so consistently our trust into worldly remedies that come at a cost, requiring from us monetary reciprocation or causing within us further disease. I am reminded of a time when after church, a fellow mom and I went outside into the yard with our children so that they could play. And her children ran up to a multitude of plants and started to eat them. <laughs> I was equally astonished and appalled. Uh, but this reaction was simply my lack of knowledge. But they knew. They knew, just like my great-grandmother knew, that the dandelion was there in the roughest of spots for us. They knew that the pineapple weed growing in the cracks of the pavement could be made into a tea to alleviate their cold and fever. They knew that the berries of the wintergreen along the side of the trail could be nibbled on as we walked. Do we believe that God knows too? I think that we are challenged to remember this, and in doing so, we are collectively invited to learn more about the native seeds and plants in our areas. My goal is to know the mustard seed, to search out its yellow flowers, cultivate its seeds so that my life can be lived out as an expression of gratitude. And for this should be an act of joy, as the psalm says, and I shout for joy because of the works of your hands. Let us thank God daily for the gifts of the seeds. Thank you. As we pray together, I ask you to consider what is on your heart today. Feel free to join your prayers along with others and we'll lift them up together. O oh God, you have made of one blood all the people of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold. Pour out your spirit upon all flesh and hasten the coming of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Thank you. 